I'm Ellen McCauley. I'm at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York. And behind the um, uh, food log this week is a little saying from Father James McCarns that says, keep looking up. And it really hit home for us, especially those old timers in the group, because Bob Frank, we lost him, Judy's beloved husband, who we all love so much. And he always said to look up, and that's where he was, and we know that. And at the end of every session, we give out a Bob Frank Look Up Award to those who have overcome adversity, that have just kept trying, and um, I'm really looking forward to meeting with Judy and, and giving out that award at the end of this session. But this article says that uh, Father Karn McCarns went to the Holy Land, and he looked up and he saw the sunrise, and he said, I, I'm looking at the same sky that Jesus looked at, and he saw the moon over the Sea of Galilee and said, this is the same Sea of Galilee that Jesus was at, you know, and, and King David was here, and King David wrote the famous line, the heavens declare the glory of God. And then Father McCarn says, wherever you live, keep looking up. And I think that's so important, literally and metaphorically. We need to look up. We need to look on the bright side. No matter what's going on, we need to say, where is God? And sometimes you got to dig deep. You know, when your car's rear-ended and you're having trouble with the insurance company and you think, I don't need this, it's a brand new car, you think, God, really? Do I need this? Then you have to just look up and say, there are worse crosses to bear, Lord, and maybe that rear-ended accident kept me from getting head-on collision a few blocks later and getting killed. So you got to praise God in the storm. And uh, sometimes that's really, really hard to do. And I have here a positive guide to overcoming failure and looking on the bright side. And I want to read this to you. We fail in the small things of life, staying on a diet, running a 5K, keeping New Year's resolutions, or controlling clutter in our homes. And then we might fail on bigger things, like overcoming addiction, or finding a good job, or an important relationship. And sometimes failures negatively impact the rest of our lives, keeping our marriage together, or working with our children, or overcoming debt. Are we going to let our past failures define us? Judy, Mary, Lena, every single one of them lost weight and gained it back and stopped and lost it and said, Mary just said, I'm not going to do it again. Lena said, I'm not going to do it again. We all need to get to the point, and we will get there when we say, you know what, I'm not going to do it again. We had a once in a 100 year pandemic. It wasn't our fault. I, could, I, I believe that it really wasn't. We had a setback as a group, as a country, as a world. So we gained a few pounds. We can overcome that. We have to look at our setbacks and say, where is the opportunity for growth? And it's so funny. If the hero in a story doesn't experience tragedy, then the audience can't relate to them. If I wasn't struggling, even if I came back from the pandemic and I was like 150 pounds and I was like, woo hoo, why can't you be like me? You probably would have been like, oh, I kind of hate Ellen now, you know? <laughs> but now you're like, oh, Ellen, my girl, I can relate to you struggle during the pandemic too. And what my kids and I call that is a womp womp story because remember you're watching American Idol and they're showing the singer then they show her family in rural Kentucky and they don't have running water and you're like oh I want them to win it's a womp womp story even my daughter she'll go womp womp and that's what our lives sometimes are a big fat womp womp story we're living that and you can relate. Poor Ellen, she gained weight over the pandemic. I know how you feel, girlfriend. We can do this together. 
and an encouraging kind guide to overcoming failure is we admit that we experience it. Now, there's a person at work who I'd say probably gained a good 60 pounds over the pandemic. She's wearing the same clothes she wore prior to the pandemic. She can barely walk. Her shirts are so tight. And then one day she said, and her pants are tight, she said, yeah, I think I gained a couple of pounds over the pandemic. I'm like, <laughs> now I am trying to wear the loosest clothes I have. I don't know about you. I'm like, let's hide some of that. You know, let, I'm not like calling attention to it. You admit it. I gained a few pounds. Woo, we admitted it. Okay. Guess what? A lot of people did. <clears throat> we have that in common. Mm -hmm. You are not alone. But you do have to take some personal responsibility, whatever it is. Even if it's your body, your hormones, your pain, those are yours. My body doesn't want this. My body needs more exercise and I'm hurt so I can't do it. You gotta own it. That's your life. What's so lacking in today's world is someone taking personal responsibility. One of the reasons why Flip Wilson was so popular because he'd say, the devil made me do it. Yeah. Remember? Right. Yeah. People yeah. used to love it. They'd wait, is he going to say it? Is he going to say it? The devil <laughs> made me do it. Because it couldn't have been us. We didn't do it. The devil made us do it. We're looking for someone else to blame. And then we need to process what happened. And there's where a lot of us don't do that. We're too busy. We don't want to think about it. Even the pain in our past, we don't really want to process it, but we have to realize that once you process it, Judy processed it. You know, she talked, I, I had a mother in a skilled nursing facility. It was stressful. I had to go there every night and, and help, and I was picking the wrong things. She owned it. She took responsibility for it, and then she turned it around. And then we let go of the factors outside of our control. I was mad about the pandemic. Did I cause the pandemic? I, I blame myself for a lot of things, believe me, but I don't think I caused the pandemic. It's out of my control. So we need to realize what we can, and we grow through the pain, and that's the hard part. We grow. When you lose weight and gain it back, it's very painful. But you can either throw in the towel and just keep gaining and gaining till you weigh 371 again, or you say, oh, what did I learn? How's that pain feel? And then we forgive. And you know who we need to forgive more than anyone? Ourselves. Ourselves. I said last week, how arrogant to not forgive ourselves when Jesus died on the cross for us. How arrogant. Let's let it go. And I'm going to do a meeting on letting it go. And then we need to share our stories. Oh my gosh, isn't that what we do every week? When I tell you something that I went through, it's because I want you all out there thinking, oh, Ellen, I went through that too. Not the same way, but I know how you feel. Failure is never the end. It is instead a necessary part of the journey. May we keep hope alive and find redemption through it. I'm going to stop right there, Bobby.